2005 GMC 1500 Sierra four-wheel drive doing the rear drum and shoes today there's a great video out there that I watched cracked me up the whole time but they really showed good details so I'm not going to do anything in depth I'm going to recommend you watch that video it's very good I'll throw in a couple things that maybe I would like to add some emphasis to you can use a couple of bolts to help drive that drum off of there if smacking it with a hammer around this edge doesn't get it loose for you those bolts push in there and shove this thing right off this drum doesn't look too bad we still had pad left up here pad in the back so we were not dragging or grinding there is this one big spring that goes around and holds both shoes in shaped like a W and it's connected right under there hooks over that hook on this side which is the passenger side I encountered some of these little washers that are kind of holding the drum on these things are completely unnecessary and can be trashed I think these are basically something they use at the factory to kind of hold them on while they're going down the assembly line so I'm just going to grab some needle nose pliers get in there and twist them off they're real thin most of the time when I've encountered these I'm able to just kind of grab them with a little bit of force pull out and start turning and it'll catch the threads and they'll just screw right off of there but these seem to have dropped in a groove down there so I'm basically just going to destroy them to get them off of there pair of side cutters just going to cut them one little tip is you want to make sure that this thing will at least turn if you made the mistake of having your park brake on this drum will never come off and you will not be able to turn this. So if you can turn it then it should come off with a little pounding or by applying some bolts to it. If given it some smacks, pretty good wax. And this area didn't get it for you. Then you can move to the bolts to help push them off. What I've done over here is I just put a little shot of uh, free all in the threads where those bolts go. And squirted just a little bit in around this hub. Not a lot. Then I tightened those bolts and then you could feel it coming loose. So now we'll go ahead and get this drum completely off of there. Now I've run this one out, it got a little tight, so I'm going to back those bolts off. Then I'm going to pound the drum back on and then pull it back out one time more, and that should do it. All right, I got that bad boy drum off of there. Now I want to look real careful around these wheel cylinders. If there's any kind of oil anywhere around here, you're going to want to replace these. These look dry as a bone. So here's the back of that wheel cylinder. A couple of bolts holding it on there. Brake hose, actually a brake tube going to it. This car has brake tubes going to the wheel cylinders goes back to a center point and then there's one flexible hose that goes back up. So there's the back of that wheel cylinder. You can see the one star bolt on the right. A little plastic dust cap over the bleeder valve. There's your nut for the brake line. And there's that brake line and that's going to go back over here right over the top of the differential and there'll be a T 
then connect it to a flexible hose. So there's the upper connection for the hose. And then there's a T right there. And that flex hose goes between them. Now again here on the rear passenger side we've got brake lining all the way around on the rear shoe and on the front shoe so it has not been grinding yet so the drum appears to be in pretty good shape so there's your drum there's no big grooves there's no big edge along here run your fingernail up and down it you're not getting caught in anything and it's in pretty good shape if it's really worn there'll be an edge right here and it can make this drum really hard to get off because it'll want to drag those shoes with it which is kind of what this one felt like but a couple times back and forth on and off with this drum and it seemed to center it up and then it would slide off You want to get a wire brush, file, scraper. There's these points here where the shoes rub. You want to get that rust good and cleaned off of there so there's no ridges. With this vehicle, the shoes are identical. You know, you got two rear ones and two front ones. A lot of older cars you had a smaller shoe uh, but anyway you can't really go wrong here. The best tip I'm going to give you is to basically take both sides the drums off, inspect what parts you need then go ahead and just take one side apart like this one leave the other side intact that way you can always go over there and see how it should go back together. So there's my reference if I need it. I like to put just a very light coating of like caliper grease on these rub points. Probably gonna need a couple pair of vice grips to kind of hold that shoe in place while you get that spring in there. Again, this video is just intended to be supplemental to the one that uh, I showed at the beginning. Just showing a few extra things in more detail. One thing that I had trouble with was that uh, trying to get the one big spring to hold these shoes in place was a little harder than I thought. I'm used to the old, you know, two springs holding on with little pins and it's more of a step-by-step -step thing. Here you're trying to fight that big heavy spring. The shoes kept shifting on me. I went back and looked and I noticed the guy in the video had his knee holding the pad in place while he pulled the spring into place. So that's why I went and started using a couple of ice grips to hold the shoe in place while I pulled that spring in place. Another thing I wanted to mention is you need to check your wheel cylinder. Wheel cylinder is going to, the groove of the wheel cylinder fits right into this part here. You want to check those wheel cylinders. Push on them a little bit. Not too far, but make sure they move in and out freely. Otherwise you might have a stuck wheel cylinder. One thing you don't want to do, and it happened to me, is that in the process of fighting that big spring I took the new shoe and right here I shoved it so far into that wheel cylinder that it popped the piston out the other side. That sucks because uh, not only did I then have to clean it up put that wheel cylinder back together but I then had to bleed the brakes after I was done so had to basically get everything done put the drums on spin a couple of lug nuts down there loosen the bleeder, get a hose on there, have somebody come help me and bleed those brakes. Actually I have a one-man brake bleeder so it wasn't too bad but be careful you don't push that wheel cylinder in so far that you pop it out the other side. You want to check those wheel cylinders to make sure they're dry 
Everything up there should be nice and dusty. No signs of any kind of brake fluid leaking out of those wheel cylinders. This is staged, but if it at all looks like this, you probably have some fluid dripping out of these wheel cylinders and you're going to need to replace them. It's a bit of a battle to try and keep the bottom of the shoe in place, get the top of the shoe into the wheel cylinder groove, and keep those pads in place. You know, you kind of get them in place, and next thing you know, they want to push towards the outside and pop out of place. So that's why a pair of ice grips or a knee is kind of needed to hold these things in place. One thing I do a little bit different is I don't mess around with taking that plug out of the backing plate and sticking a screwdriver in there to adjust the shoes out. I go ahead and just uh, put the drum on. If it feels loose, I pull the drum back off. Turn that adjuster screw by hand a few times. Then put the drum back on. Keep taking it off, putting it back on until I feel some friction there. So I get it close. But that way you can reach your hand in there. You can pull that little detent plate back out of the way. You can take a screwdriver and roll it and you can make a lot faster progress than trying to stick it in through the back and click 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 click. You have to come off and on a few times but no big deal. Once you get it close you're in pretty good shape. When you take the car out for the test drive go ahead and stop, back up, stop, go forward, put it in reverse, back up, stop, That'll help to get those things snugged up a little bit. These bolts are M10 times 1.5.